The end of Esau's dominion draws near. In today's world, Esau who is Edom controls the corrupt systems of this world. Systems rooted in greed, rebellion, and systematic oppression. These systems are destined to collapse, paving the way for Yahuwah's eternal kingdom. A time when righteousness will reign under Jacob. This monumental transition fulfills the prophecy found in Daniel 2 verse 44, and it says this, And in the days of these kings, the Elohim of heaven will set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, it shall break in pieces, and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. The judgment against Esau and Edom is portrayed in Isaiah 34 verses 5 to 6, For my sword shall be bathed in heaven, indeed it shall come down on Edom, and on the people of my curse, for judgment. The sword of Yahuwah is filled with blood, it is made overflowing with fatness, with the blood of lambs and goats, with the fat of the kidneys of rams. For Yahuwah has a sacrifice in Basra, and a great slaughter in the land of Edom. Basra, a city of Edom, becomes a symbol of Yahuwah's fierce judgment. This sacrifice is not merely physical, it represents the complete end of Esau's rebellion and the systems he controls. The judgment on Edom is described as a sacrifice by Yahuwah, symbolizing the final and total destruction of Esau's dominion. This judgment serves as the end of an era defined by wickedness and rebellion. Esau's fall is not merely a historical event but a prophetic moment that points to the ultimate triumph of Yahuwah's righteousness. As Esau falls, Jacob rises to fulfill his destiny as the bearer of Yahuwah's promise. This transition is the dawn of Yahuwah's righteous reign. Jacob, representing the restored and obedient nation of Israel, will inherit the kingdom prepared by the Most High. Esau's fall is a warning to the world. Rebellion against the Most High leads to judgment, while obedience to Yahuwah leads to eternal life and restoration. Judgment and servitude for rebellious nations, despite Israel's trials and periods of disobedience, Yahuwah's mercy prevails. The promise to settle them in their own land reflects the restoration of the Israelites to the place Yahuwah prepared for them, a land where they will no longer be exiled or oppressed. This is a reaffirmation of his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, ensuring that his chosen people will inherit the promises made to their forefathers. The passage paints a vivid picture of justice for those who have oppressed and enslaved Israel. The oppressors will experience the very captivity they inflicted upon Yahuwah's people, but on a level never seen before. This reversal of roles is a testament to Yahuwah's sovereignty and his ability to bring justice in his timing. The oppressed become rulers, and the captors are subdued, a fulfillment of biblical justice as prophesied throughout scripture. Unlike the cruel oppression Israel faced, this servitude will occur under a system of justice and fairness, governed by Yahuwah's law. However those who are sold to other nations will suffer at the hand of their oppressors. Jeremiah 30 verse 16, Therefore all those who devour you shall be devoured, and all your adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity, those who plunder you shall become plunder, and all who prey upon you I will make a prey. Revelation 2 verses 26 to 27, presents a promise from Yahushua. He who overcomes, and keeps my works until the end. This highlights the necessity of perseverance and obedience. Overcoming involves standing firm in faith despite trials, temptations, and opposition. Keeping my works refers to actively living according to Yahushua's teachings and commands, demonstrating faith through action. To him I will give power over the nations. This reflects a reward of authority in the coming kingdom. Those who remain steadfast in faith will be entrusted with positions of leadership and judgment as co-heirs with Yahushua. This is part of the ultimate fulfillment of the promises made to the faithful. He shall rule them with a rod of iron. This phrase signifies strong and unyielding authority. The rod of iron is a symbol of absolute power and justice, showing that the rulership will be firm, righteous, and divinely empowered. They shall be dashed to pieces like the potter's vessels. 
This alludes to the judgment of rebellious nations and peoples. It evokes imagery from Psalm 2 verse 9, where the Messiah's dominion and power to subdue opposition are foretold. The breaking of the vessels represents the end of defiance against Yahuwah's rule, as I also have received from my Father. Yahusha emphasizes that his authority comes directly from Yahuwah, reinforcing that the overcomer's future power is an extension of the divine order. This assures that the promise is not only spiritual but rooted in the will of the Most High. This passage serves as both an encouragement and a reminder. The reward for faithfulness is significant, but it requires endurance and alignment with Yahuwah's purpose. It assures the righteous of their eventual vindication and authority under Yahusha and the kingdom to come. Baruch 4 verses 33 to 34, For he that brought these plagues upon you, will deliver you from the hands of your enemies. This verse reflects the duality of Yahuwah's actions, both as a just disciplinarian and a merciful deliverer. While the Israelites faced plagues and suffering due to their disobedience, this verse reaffirms Yahuwah's promise to restore them. His correction is not permanent destruction, but a call to repentance and eventual redemption. For my hope is in the everlasting, that he will save you, and joy is come unto me from the Holy One, because of the mercy which shall soon come unto you from the everlasting our Savior. The everlasting is the ultimate source of hope and salvation for Israel. This verse emphasizes the faithfulness of Yahuwah to his covenant. Baruch speaks with confidence and joy, proclaiming the mercy that will soon come to the faithful remnant of Israel. This restoration is not just physical but spiritual, bringing them back into alignment with Yahuwah's will. Baruch's message is clear. Yahuwah uses trials to refine his people and demonstrates his justice through the judgment of rebellious nations. The plagues and eventual deliverance are a testament to his righteous sovereignty. Judith 16 verse 17 Woe to the nations that rise up against my kindred! Yahuwah Almighty will take vengeance on them in the day of judgment, putting fire and worms in their flesh, and they shall feel them and weep forever. Judith's proclamation underscores the severity of divine judgment on nations that oppose Israel. This imagery of fire and worms evokes a sense of eternal torment, a fate reserved for those who rebel against Yahuwah and oppress his chosen people. This verse is a chilling reminder of the consequences of aligning against Yahuwah's will. Judith's words remind us of the enduring covenant between Yahuwah and Israel. Her warning stands as a declaration of the Most High's ultimate authority and the assurance that no nation will prosper against his people. Retribution and Restoration Yahuwah's actions are a balance of justice and mercy. While rebellious nations face destruction, Israel is promised mercy and restoration as part of Yahuwah's everlasting covenant. The Most High declared in Malachi 1 verses 3 to 4, and it says this, but Esau I have hated, and laid waste his mountains and his heritage for the jackals of the wilderness. Even though Edom has said, We have been impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places, thus says Yahuwah of hosts, they may build, but I will throw down, they shall be called the territory of wickedness, and the people against whom Yahuwah will have indignation forever. Oppressive nations will either be brought low to serve or utterly destroyed as justice demands a reversal of roles. Revelation 13 verse 10 tells us this. He who leads into captivity shall go into captivity. He who kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Isaiah 14 verse 2 provides a prophetic glimpse of this reversal, and it says this. Then people will take them and bring them to their place and the house of Israel will possess them for servants and maids in the land of Yahuwah. They will take them captive whose captives they were, and rule over their oppressors. Soon the tables will turn, and justice will reign as Yahuwah establishes his divine order. Israel's restoration marks the establishment of an eternal kingdom. This kingdom will bring peace, justice, and divine order to the earth. The kingdom will be one of holiness, where Israel shines as the light to the nations and Yahushua reigns as King of Kings. 
Revelation 21 verse 4, And Yahuwah will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Yahuwah's plan will come to completion, and his people, along with the faithful remnant, will dwell in everlasting peace. Please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. May your name be glorified in all the earth. Thank you, Father, for the gift of life. Hallelujah. In the name of the Holy One of Israel, the Messiah, Amen. Father, Amen.